We're going to take advantage of the dynamic emitter object linking right now. We're going to capture the bubble, and even if we change it, it'll automatically update in the emitter. One of my favorite features in the new game. The reason I'm doing this is because I want to put a mover on it, and I don't want to have to chase it across the screen. And the reason I need to put a mover on it is because when I spit a bubble out, I want it to go upwards, regardless of what way the player is facing. So since it already has an anti-gravity tweak to not fall down, let's put a mover on it to make sure it goes upwards. Give it a little speed and everything. Make sure it's not set to local space. And that should do it. And he's blowing bubbles. Awesome. But we don't want him to be blowing bubbles all the time. We only want him to do it if he's underwater. So let's put that emitter into the chip for movement underwater. We'll also hook it up to the battery that activates everything else on the chip, just for good measure. Now what else can we do to make this more interesting? How about allowing him to drown to death? We're going to use a couple timers. This timer will be a preliminary timer. It will start the drowning process. And this other timer will be used in the actual drowning process. I'm setting it to one second. You'll understand why in a moment. I'm also going to use a counter. So every time this timer with one second reaches one second, it will increment this counter. So it will count up every second. Reason I'm splitting it up like this is so I can have some kind of indication you're drowning. Some kind of sound effect or a number popping up or something like that. And of course when this counter reaches its limit, it's going to activate this destroyer set to explode. So let's wire everything up. The counter goes to the destroyer. The first timer goes to the second timer. And we're going to need to start the process when he's underwater. So let's hook up state 2, as in we're underwater, to the start input of that timer. Very good. And of course, if we leave the water, we want to reset everything. So we're not drowning anymore. It'd be awfully strange if we caught our breath, jumped in the water again, and instantly drowned. Make sure everything is on zero for starters. Otherwise, we'll get weird stuff happening. We also want this timer to reset itself, since we want it to count every second. So we need an OR gate here. So the first half of the OR gate will be taken by the knot of the impact sensor for water so we're out of the water that's one case or the timer hits one second that's the other case so we're gonna wire that into reset and make sure everything's zero like I said and here's our drowning routine let's also add some sounds let's find some nice indication that something's happening let's see what's here uh, I think this sounds pretty good this is zoink Let's use that. Set it to uh, play once. And hit the timer's output to that. And that'll do that every second the timer's active. Let's give it a whirl. We're swimming, we're swimming. Uh oh, you hear that sound? It means we're starting to drown. Okay, let's really try to drown now. Help, I can't swim, I can't swim. Help me, help me. So that concludes my tutorial on swimming in funky pools. Now onward, my trusty steed, we will control the entire universe!